it's a folk art. It is handmade. And this is what it looked like on the bottom. And I got to tell you, when I got this, I almost put it to the side because I, I figured it was just a local artist that probably wasn't very well known and it probably wouldn't sell for much. But I have definitely learned my lesson. So, hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about 16 of my big money bolos, items that I bought low and sold high. I'm gonna tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. And one thing that I'm kind of known for is sourcing cheap. So in this video, you're gonna see what I mean. And these items sold for $35 or more, and if you want to see my bread and butter items, which are even easier to find, things you can pick up every single day at the garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, check out my bread and butter videos. Those are $35 and less. All right, let's get started here with the first item. And this is kind of a funny pickup. Um, I was at a thrift store and this guy is humongous. Um, I had video footage of me finding him. And as you guys probably heard in another video, I lost a bunch of footage. So no footage for that. But I paid $8 for him, which is paying up for me. I typically source $5 or less for my items. I like to bundle and buy in bulk. But um, 8 bucks, I went ahead and bought him. He still had his original tag on him. It says Bright Time Toys. Nothing I'd ever heard of. I just thought he was cool. Now, I will tell you, I really wanted him for my thumbnail, and that's why I bought him, part of the reason I bought him, and then I lost the footage. I thought I was going to have him for a little while, but he ended up selling super, super quick, and I went back to the same store, and they had another one, and this was before it sold, and I didn't pick it up, so now I'm kind of like, oh, I should have got it, but anyway, they must have had somebody donate um, some new with tag uh, toys. So this guy ended up selling for $44.85 plus shipping. The buyer was all in for $80.73. Um, I am going to give you the all in price on that guy because $80 for a big stuffed animal is absolutely crazy. All right, the next item. This is a Barbie sign language toy. Um, it's a Barbie doll. It was from Toys R Us. It was an exclusive from 1999. I saw this and I was like, I had to have it. I did pay up for this. I got it at a garage sale. I paid $10 for it and I ended up selling it for the sale price of $69 plus shipping. And again, the buyer was all in for $86.20. The next item are these Toys R Us Animal Alley Bunny Rabbit Plush Stuffed Animals. I put twins in the title because they are identical. And somebody messaged me about these. If I remember correctly, it was an international sale. And they sent me a photo of a bunny that was theirs as a kid. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it was the same bunny. That thing was so beat up. But she wanted these, I believe, for her kids. So uh, she ended up buying these for a best offer of $85 plus shipping and I got these at a garage sale for 50 cents each. So a good thing to do when you have two things that are the same is to put twins in the title. A lot of times people that have twins are looking for identical stuffed animals and they will search that keyword. The next item is this vintage brown bag curly lion 2001 cookie cutter craft mold. Um, I did use the word standing in the title. It's made in the USA with its original tag, new old stock, never used. Um, I typically will use this type of tape measure for things. It stays open better than like the sewing flimsy ones. And um, I like to show the measurements that way. I got this out of a thrift store mystery box. So my cost of goods was probably a dollar or less. And I ended up taking a best offer of $75 on this. And the buyer was all in for $95.39. Now, these brown bag is the brand. They do vary. This one was big money for some reason. Some of them are just bread and butter and some of them go for a lot more. Let me get you a picture of the back. I think I have it right here. They will be labeled on the back 
with what it is, all the information you need for your title, really, and make sure you put the date in the title. All right, let's look at the next item here. The next item is this Herb Braemeyer signed hand carved wood Santa folk art Christmas figurine from 1997. Um, these also came out of a thrift store mystery box and it's a folk art. It is handmade and this is what it looked like on the bottom. And I got to tell you, when I got this, I almost put it to the side because I... I figured it was just a local artist that probably wasn't very well known and it probably wouldn't sell for much, but I have definitely learned my lesson. So your takeaway from this is if you see items that are hand carved, even if it's not like a super famous artist, there will be people that are local to the area that will know that artist and they will be searching for it. I have had three by the same gentleman sell. And one of them was a local person to my area and I delivered it to their home and I talked to her for a little while. And it's funny because I'm like, is this the Braemeyer whose um, wife was a teacher? And she said, yeah. And I had the, the teacher, my teacher was the wife of this artist. And I guess She's the person that actually hand painted these. So when I drew, went to drop this off, I got like a whole history lesson on um, the history of this artist, which is still really cool. And for some reason, these just sell really good. So if you ever see Herb Braemeyer, definitely pick it up. And I ended up selling this one for $44.99 plus shipping. And speaking of, here is another one I sold by him. Also came out of a mystery box. And the mystery box that I got was a whole big lot from one person and I just bought it all out. And there was tons of Santas. It was just tons. And I had a garage sale and I sold so many wood. Oh, I, I look back now and I'm like, what did I sell? They were wood uh, figurines like this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I probably should have looked over those better. I feel like I kept the stuff that was shippable to the side, but there were some really cool big pieces that I sold probably way too cheap. Lesson learned. That's that's how it works, right? So this one is from 1990 and it sold for a best offer of $42. And again, right there signed. It's it looks like it's etched in with like one of those things that burn, you burn it in. Uh so best offer of 42 on that guy. And he's a little smaller here. He's only about eight inches. The next item I sold are these headbands, and these were from my scavenger hunt, the Benz 10 scavenger hunt. If you put in hashtag Benz 10, um, it will pull up everybody that participated. And what we did was I came up with a scavenger hunt, 10 items that my featured um, members of my this channel had to go into the Goodwill Benz and search for these 10 items and create a video. Super fun to see what everybody got. Um, a rural squirrel won that competition and she did awesome, but so many others did great too. So definitely go check out those videos. Lots of bolo finders. But these headbands, I was just certain when I listed these that these were going to be a Poshmark sale. It just looked, it screamed Poshmark and I sold it on eBay. Um, I do cross post my items using List Perfectly. Um, if you'd like to try it, there's a video down in the description that shows you how it works. It basically gets your items onto other platforms way quicker than manually doing it. Um, if you decide you want to try it, you can use coupon referral code BOLO BUDDIES, all one word. I have a hair. And that will get you 30% off your first month. All right. So the headbands, uh, there was a lot. There were 32 of them here. It's by weight, $1.79 a pound. I'm guessing I had maybe five bucks in this probably. And I ended up selling these on a best offer of $38 plus shipping. And I did have several people ask me to part it out. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to part it out. All right. These Clarks came from a garage sale. I paid $5 for them. They were a size 11, which is part of the reason I picked them up. Um, bigger sizes are a little bit harder to find. So you can typically ask a little more. That's been my experience. I am definitely not a shoe reseller. So um, that's just kind of how I feel. <laughs> I feel like 11 is a good size. And I sold these for $45.49 and the buyer paid shipping on those. The next item I picked up at a garage sale, I paid $1.50 for these guys. 
And they ended up selling on best offer of $40 and all in for $51.44. These are 1979 Insco Ceramic Golf, or I'm sorry, Gnome Elf Santa Christmas figurines. I don't know where I got golf from, but look how cute they are. And they're not very big. Uh, here's what the bottoms look like. So they've got the little sticker, but they are also stamped. And right here is my tape measure. So nice little sale right there. I enjoy selling Christmas items a lot. So you will see those in my videos. Now, this is another item that I picked up at the Goodwill Bins. And I made a mistake on this one. Uh, these are Jobst, J-O-B-S-T. I think that's how you say it. Compression thigh high stockings. I do recommend picking these up if you see them. These sold really quickly and they sold for $43.20. Now, do you guys see the problem? My title says medium and they are a size large. I think what I did was, I think that I um, forgot to update the title, but I did put in the 2030 MMHG. I don't even know what that means. Um, I, I just, I'm not sure what happened, but I have medium in, let me see, medical compression. I don't know why I did not change that to large. So they opened a return, which was completely fine. And I said to go ahead and return the item. Oh, you know what? See, M Navy, maybe medium Navy was the color. I'm not sure. But they opened a return. I told them to go ahead and return the item. I was happy to take a return. I would have refunded them everything plus their shipping because it was my mistake. Well, I got a notification that the return was closed because they filed a chargeback. So I think when they file a chargeback, eBay releases the funds to me and gives them their money back. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure I, I still got the payout because they never sent the item back. All right, the next item is this uh, Cranium Caribou Island. And you guys have heard me talk about Caribou Island or Caribou a lot. This is Caribou Island. It is also a bolo. It is uh, made differently. The other one is square. This is rounded and it it's a different format, but still has the key and very similar features to it. Um, but it's got these tokens, the key could have parted it out, but everything was there. So I went ahead and sold this complete Sold this for $49. The buyer was all in for $66.27. And I can't remember where I got that one. I did not write it down. Guessing I paid probably two or three bucks for it. The next item is this vintage sheer Swiss dot dress. Um, it's a girl's youth. And I put this up for auction. It is Swiss dot. Let me show you a close up of what Swiss dot looks like right there. It's kind of raised and flocky. Super, super cute. Um... I picked this up at a garage sale for a dollar and I sold this on auction and it sold right here for $52 plus shipping. The next item I sold is this vintage Hawaiian dress. It's a size large, red, white, and blue made in Hawaii. Let me get you a visual of the tag. I know I have it somewhere right here, made in Hawaii. Um, I picked this up at a thrift store and I actually have video footage of me finding this. It's on my thumbnail. So you guys can go check out that video to see what else I bought that day. But this was definitely the highlight of the video. I ended up taking a best offer of $50 on this and the buyer was all in for $60.53. All right, these are awesome. This was a super fast sale. Um, if you see this brand, definitely uh, search solds. I was at a garage sale. They wanted $10 for these. And I asked them if they, um, what their best was because I wasn't really sure because they're slippers, how much I could get for them, but they were brand new and they told me they would take five. So I went ahead and picked those up and I sure am glad that I did because they sold quickly and I sold those for $70 plus shipping and they're my size. And I thought about keeping them for like 30 seconds. Um, does anybody do that? And you're like, oh, nope, I'd rather have the money. So they're cute. But how often do I wear slippers? All right. The next item here are these Max Maxell XL2 high ba bias cassette tape. And there's eight of them here. And I picked these up at the Goodwill bins. And I lost my footage from that haul. But I was digging through the bins. And Nobody else was grabbing these. I knew they were a bolo. Rachel Strickland talks about selling these also over on her channel in the VHS blank takes. 
ah, blank tapes. Definitely go check out Rachel Strickland if you have not already. She has an amazing channel and she is a bolo finder. And her channel is her name. All right. So like I said, I'm digging through the bins. Nobody's even trying to get these. You know, I would have thought like two or three people would have been fighting me for these. They are such a bolo. Uh, I ended up taking a best offer of $65 for these. The buyer was all in for $84.06 and they sold quickly. And the last item here is this Disney Santa Jack Skellington Zero Nightmare Before Christmas ornament. If you guys see the Jack Skellington, uh, this, this character right here, these ornaments are definitely a bolo. And you're going to see more of these in future videos. Um, I picked up a mystery box from a thrift store and there were probably six or seven of these in there. And I am almost sold out. And they go in the $40 to $50 range, each and every single one of them. This did not even have a box. And it sold for $40.99 plus shipping. Now, some of them are Hallmark. This one is not Hallmark. And it still sold that high. All right, you guys. Let me know in the comments which item was your favorite bolo. Lots of fun little stories in that one. Uh, uh, I did have my internet. I can see, am I getting fuzzy? Hopefully it'll fix itself here in a minute. I get a little uh, alert. Okay. It looks like it's okay now. Um, so I, somebody, nope, it's back. Oh, well, somebody left me a comment saying that they prefer that I do not tell you the all in price and that it's annoying. So I have asked you guys for feedback before on if you like the all in price, some people like it, some people don't. Um, I tell you the sold price. If you prefer, I just say buyer paid shipping. Let me know if you prefer the all-in price. Let me know down in the comments. Just kind of curious. Do that again and kind of see what everybody thinks about that. All right, you guys, there's going to be some videos popping up here and here and a video down below and a subscribe. If you're new here, thank you so much for being here. If you've been here a while, I appreciate you so much. And thanks for watching.